Take the day! The Roman army was widely regarded as the most deadly and skilled fighting force in the history of the ancient world. At its peak, it maintained a military force of approximately 500,000 men and was responsible for the administration of a vast empire as well as the conquest of large portions of the ancient world, including Britain and the Middle East. The Roman army was a highly developed and meticulously organized machine, and it was divided into legions, which consisted of several thousand men, and centurions, comprising 80 men. For Roman troops serving on the ground, life was difficult and there were great expectations. Daily marches may span roughly 30 miles, mistakes were punished with brutality, and despite the Roman army's success, there was always a chance of death or injury. Here are 10 facts about life in the Roman army. The Roman army was divided into legionaries and auxiliaries. There were two primary divisions that made up the Roman army. To begin, there were the legionaries. These warriors were Roman citizens and had a high level of esteem across the empire. Auxiliaries were recruited from the outside of the Roman Empire and even further afield to fill the ranks of the second class of Roman soldiers. They would have been paid less, and they would have been expected to perform jobs that were more dangerous, such as standing on the front lines during military advances and conflicts. There were half a million soldiers in the Roman army. It is estimated that there were approximately 500,000 troops serving in the Roman army during the height of its power. This enormous number was composed by smaller units referred to as legions, each of which consisted of between 4,000 to 6,000 troops. After that, these legions were divided up into smaller divisions known as centuries, and each century probably had somewhere around 80 soldiers in it. A centurion was the person in charge of a century. Soldiers sometimes mutinied against their centurions. The majority of the time, centurions maintained order through the use of force, they would typically carry a short stick or a rod of vine and use it to beat disobedient soldiers. In the year 14 AD, a centurion by the name of Lucilius was given the nickname Cito Alternam by the other soldiers under his command, which means bring me another. This was in reference to his propensity of breaking his rod over the back of a soldier before requesting that he be provided with a new staff. Mutinies, on the other hand, were not unheard of. When soldiers were pushed to their breaking point at the hands of ruthless disciplinarians, they occasionally rebelled against their commanders. In the year 14 AD, this occurred inside the Rhine legions when soldiers attacked their centurions and turned their vine sticks against them. This took place among the soldiers. Roman soldiers were paid based on their rank and class. It is helpful to reflect the hierarchy of pay in the Roman army, even though it is difficult to convert denarii an old Roman coinage into current cash. The denarii were used in ancient Rome. During the second century, newly enlisted legionaries would be given the viaticum, which normally consisted of three gold pieces or 75 denarii. Back then, one's rank determined their pay. According to an ancient Roman papyrus from the second century, auxiliary infantrymen were paid approximately 100 denarii per year while their legionary counterparts received approximately 300. Moving up the hierarchy, centurions would receive at least 1,000 denarii each year, with Primus Pilus, senior centurion, receiving more like 15,000 denarii each year. Legionaries wore iron-plated armor. The loria was a type of armor that was commonly used by Roman legionaries. It was composed of iron plates that covered the chest and shoulders, the head, the neck, and the cheeks were all protected by the helmets. Foot troops normally carried a rectangular wooden shield, a pilum, a dagger, and a sword. The legionaries' job determined the types of weapons they carried, but in general, foot soldiers were equipped with a pilum or javelin, a dagger, and a sword. On the other hand, soldiers serving in the auxiliary had shields in the shape of ovals and wore tunics with chainmail rather than iron-plated armor. Training was rigorous and lasted four months. Approximately four months of strenuous training would need to be completed by new recruits before they could be sent out on missions. This training program started off with marching and then moved on to other activities like sparring, training with weapons, and strategic exercises such as formation drills. When training was finally finished, soldiers would be able to march a distance of 20 kilometers per day while fully armed. As a mark of pride, some of the newest soldiers took on Roman names. 
this was common practice. The Roman army handled civil matters as well as military campaigns. In addition to its function as a formidable military power that was responsible for the conquest of vast portions of the ancient world, the Roman army was also responsible for administrative tasks. In addition to its role as the instrument through which the Roman state exerted its authority over its territories, the Roman army was accountable for the collection of taxes, the construction of physical structures such as forts, viaducts and roads, the administration of civil law, and the policing of the populace. The Roman centurion Gaius Severius Emeritus, for instance, was in charge of overseeing the reconstruction of the Roman spas at Bath while Roman Britain was under Roman rule. Roman soldiers weren't permitted to marry until the second century. Roman soldiers were barred by law from getting married until the middle of the second century ad. Despite this, it appears from historical documents and tombstones that many people disregarded this regulation. In fact, even centurions and higher-ranking members of the military hierarchy were known to have spouses. Soldiers might have to march 30 miles a day while on campaigns. According to all sources, life during military operations consisted entirely of hard labor, and justamiter, also known as a reasonable march, or a magnamiter, also known as a heavier march, would require the soldiers to travel 20 or 30 miles, respectively. This would be considered an expected duty. Following each day's march, the soldiers would construct a camp that was enclosed by a wall around its perimeter. They would sleep in tents made of leather with approximately eight other people, who were known as contubernails. They would begin demolishing the wall around the perimeter the following morning, and then proceed with the operation once more. Roman soldiers used a tortoise formation to defend against enemy projectiles. When going into war, each legion would be led by standard bearers who would show the legion's standards. Soldiers would typically hurl their pylums and charge into the fray when the front line was less than 30 meters away from the lines held by the adversary. Stones, spears, and arrows would be rained down on the adversary by a line of soldiers in the back of the formation. There were further instances in which a tortoise or testudo shape was utilized. At this point, a group of soldiers surrounded themselves with shields and built a makeshift wall to protect themselves from incoming fire from the enemy. If our side were victorious, the cavalry would pursue any enemy troops that tried to escape the battlefield. There is a possibility that prisoners will be kidnapped, as well as goods and weapons found on the bodies of those who have died. 